continuing to read out behind the scenes information related to the Doctor Who serial The Dominators. The Radio Times program listing of episode 1 was accompanied by a black and white photograph of two quarks at the drilling site near the War Museum, along with a synopsis bearing the title Look Out, It's the Quarks, which read as follows. Fair Doctor Who's latest enemies in the new adventure beginning today at 5.15, the TARDIS excels itself and picks a very pleasant spot on which to land, the planet Dolcus. The Doctor has been there before and knows its inhabitants, the pacifist Dolcians, as well. So he promises Jamie and Zoe that they can look forward to a peaceful holiday, but things are never what they seem, and the Doctor discovers how he has been deceived, for the planet has been taken over by the cruel Dominators and their deadly robots, the Quarks, perhaps the most frightening enemy the Doctor has ever encountered. That's the original published text. Chris Jeffries doubles for Patrick Troughton in all location shot scenes featuring the Doctor. The Quarks are played by children from a nearby acting school. They were voiced by an adult woman doing a childlike voice with something of a public schoolboy sound. This is one of the stories chosen to be shown as part of BSB's Doctor Who Weekend in September 1990. Patrick Troughton requested a showing of the Dominators at his birthday party shortly before his death in March 1987. It's quite, quite unfortunate. The Radio Times program listing of episode 3 in certain regions was accompanied by a black and white photograph of Jamie and Carly on the island of death bearing the title To In Peril with the accompanying caption Jamie Fraser Hines and Cully Vidolshin Arthur Cox are menaced by the terrifying quarks in Doctor Who today at 5.15 is the original published text. The quarks frequently appeared in the run of the second Doctor in TV comic starting on the very day that episode 4 of the serial initially aired. The Radio Times program listing for episode 4 was accompanied by a black and white head and shoulders photograph of Wendy Padbury along with a brief biography of the actress bearing the title, How Wendy Caught the Acting Bug. Jelly babies, more usually associated with the fourth Doctor, make their Doctor Who debut. The Doctor eats some from a bag while waiting for them in the transport capsule. This is the only Doctor Who story directed by Morris Barry not to feature the Cybermen, and the only story written by Heisman and Lincoln not to feature the Robot Yeti or the Great Intelligence. Douglas Canfield was considered to direct. That might have been a good idea, although maybe it's best to to relegate Canfield's talents to superior scripts. Though, I like Heisman and Lincoln. Maybe maybe this was butchered more than as as they claim by Derek Sherwin, although I don't think this in any case would have been up to par with The Abominable Snowman or The Web of Fear, both of which are stupendous scripts. With a length of five episodes, this was the longest season opening of the classic series. Arthur Cox sprained his ankle while filming at Gerard's Cross. He would be in a cast for some time as a result, limiting Morris Barry's camera angles for the rest of the pre-filming. Mervyn Heisman and Henry Lincoln drew upon Latin for many of their character names. Bovum, Bull, Senex, Old Man, and Dolshin, Beautiful People. The name Cully, meanwhile, came from a word meaning dupe. Cully's passengers in episode 1 had names derived from Arabic numerals. Wahed, meaning from, from Wahid, 1. Etnan, from... Ifnan 2 and Tolata from Falafa 3. Senex was originally called Somex, derived from the Latin word for sleep. The word quark came from a family of subatomic particles, the existence of which had first been theorized in 1964. Mervyn Heisman and Henry Lincoln wanted to get away from the purely action-adventure nature of their previous scripts. Preferring a narrative with timely modern relevance, they sought to explore what they considered to be the misguidedly passive philosophy of the hippie movement. The Quarks are created to be the series' next merchandisable monster after the Daleks, however a falling out between the writers and the production led to this being their sole appearance. Things got so heated that Mervyn Heisman and Henry Lincoln attempted to legally prevent the serial from airing. Mervyn Heisman and Henry Lincoln observed that much of the Daleks' appeal lay in the fact that they didn't just look like people in costumes. With this in mind, they devised the Quarks, and I don't think the Quarks when they wound up being considered as iconic as the Daleks, unfortunately. And that's the end of our behind-the-scenes information. In episode 4, we'll talk more about the Quarks and their role in the expanded Doctor Who mythos. Thanks again, good and dear friends everywhere.